So ahead of tomorrow's expected full House vote on impeachment, estimates show that they have the necessary numbers to impeach 216, 218 and all. Um, Really, that's looked like that was going to happen from the beginning on the House side. And tonight, the count is that 28 of the 31 dis Democrats that we've been talking about in the Trump districts are going to vote yes, and they are still uh, tallying up to that final 31. Let's bring in Trey Gowdy, former House Oversight Committee Chairman and Fox News contributor. Trey, good evening. Good to have you here. Good um, evening. What did you think of you? Susan Jaslow? I thought she was fantastic. Uh, I, I, I wish I wish everybody in public office could could hear how normal, average, yep. uh, reasonable people think and feel. I thought she was great. You know, she said people need to play nice and they need to let voters decide who the president is going to be. Do you think that that idea resonates at all on on Capitol Hill on on the House side? Oh, I think they have a lot more of a base analysis than that. Here's the analysis. If I vote not to impeach Donald Trump, I'm going to get a primary opponent and I'm guaranteed to lose. Mm -hmm. If I vote with my party, I'm going to get a really strong general election opponent, but I might win. So mm -hmm. for Democrats in Trump districts, uh, their dilemma is, do I lose in the spring for sure, or do I maybe lose in the fall? Um, when it's pretty and there's college football and other things to mitigate my grief, but they're guaranteed <laughs> to lose if they break. Oh, if they break with their party, they're guaranteed to lose in their primary. Wow. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see where, where all of this goes. Do you think politically overall, I mean, what do you, you know, look ahead for a bit to 2020 based on what you see right now. Um, how do you think this sorts out? Do Democrats hold the House after this? You know, Kevin McCarthy is a is a prolific fundraiser. Uh, he, I, I'm biased. I like him a lot. I think he's recruiting good candidates. So is Elise Stefanik. But I think it's an uphill it's an uphill battle to flip mm -hmm. that many seats. Um, I think we do hold the Senate, and as you and I have discussed in the past, I think all of this is about flipping the Senate. I, I think it's about Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi trying to yeah. neuter a second. Donald Trump term because there's not a chance in hell he's going to be removed from office. So why are we going through this exercise if we know he's going to be on the ballot in 2020? Well, well, let me ask you about what uh, Chuck Schumer said today. He said that he was appalled that Mitch McConnell said that he was impartial in this process. Mitch McConnell said it's a political process. This is not a court of law. And he, you know, he's on one side. Uh, Schumer said that's unbelievable. He said we have to be able to bring in witnesses. We want Mulvaney. We want Bolton and the two other men who were associated with them. What do you say? Um, that's what you do during the investigation. And Adam Schiff and Jerry Nadler, if they really felt strongly about Bolton and Mulvaney, they could have gone to court. But yeah. what they felt most strongly about was hurrying through this because they're being governed by calendar. I mean, the Judiciary Committee, Martha, called uh, more impeachment witnesses for the Nixon impeachment than they did the Trump impeachment. They called John Dean, and then they called, uh, what, a couple of law professors? Alderman that's it. Oh, no yeah. fact witnesses. Yeah, no fact witnesses. All right. Uh, I, I want to get your thoughts on this uh, Jim Comey interview that um, Chris Wallace conducted with him on Sunday. And with regard to the FISA process and with regard to whether or not these were errors, mistakes or something more. Watch this. Given the repeated errors, some would say abuses of the FISA process, does Attorney General Barr have a point? No. He does not have a factual basis as the Attorney General of the United States to be speculating that agents acted in bad faith. The facts just aren't there. Full stop. That doesn't make it any less consequential, any less important, but that's an irresponsible statement. So he says that was an irresponsible statement. What do you say? He's lost his mind. H how many of these close calls went in favor of President Trump? I mean, when, no. when they changed the email, was it to help Trump or hurt him? When they put the dossier material in, was it to help Trump or hurt him? When they put the, the, the DNC-funded Fusion GPS research material, was that to help Trump or to hurt him? Everything that happened was done to hurt Donald Trump. So, I'm, look, this is the same Jim Comey who thought it was nonsense that we were looking into it. Now he's had a, a, a mea culpa moment. It's two years too late. We really could have used him... Uh, uh, doing some objectivity when he was at the FBI um, and, and, and not two years too late. Yeah. I, I mean, how, how do you describe, you know, that what you just said? You know, how could it be that all of those errors went in one direction and there isn't anything? Any, and why isn't he curious as to whether or not there was a possible motive behind it? <laughs> 
uh, because he's morally superior to me and you, because he's always right, because he's the same Jim Comey who, who couldn't admit he messed up the Clinton investigation. Mm. It's the same Jim Comey who said the FBI didn't give a wit about policy. It's the same Jim Comey who said he didn't leak or do weasel things in a very document that he leaked. So that's the Jim Comey we're talking about. Trey Gowdy, thank you, sir. Always good to see you. We'll yes, see you soon. You too.